Hello, welcome to another episode. Today we have a very special episode because for years now we've been hearing about the ETH merge, but a lot of us don't know what does that even mean. It's a huge deal, and it's happening now on September fifteenth, which is why we thought we'll make a video about this. Joining us today, we have Resident Sharpa at Super Team Dow. We have Cash Danda. We have Shashank, who is also uh, in the Dow, and he's responsible for the reputation system in the Dow. Shashank, welcome. And we have eighties porn star Devaya Bopanna, <laughs> who's joining us today. Hi, hi, Tanmay. Uh, trying to grow my uh, portfolio on my face. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> 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 they eat merge what do you know about it so we can get we can get an idea of what the general audience knows about the eat <laughs> merge see it is like uh, you know dharmesh darshan announcing dharkan 2 okay <laughs> he's been doing this for many years but it's never happened <laughs> you know either uh, sunil shetty is not ready or akshay kumar is not ready or shilpa shetty is not ready <laughs> So, I, you know, finally ne- looks like oh, they're all so. coming together. I never in my life did I think that the ETH merge will be compared to Dharkan two. We've been anticipating this for a very long time, but I'm very sad to know, Cash, that I don't know too many details about this. I know that we're going from hmm. proof of work to proof of stake, and today we will understand a lot more in depth about what is the ETH merge. You guys want to stick around? This is a huge deal in the world of crypto. Cash, take it away. But before we like talk too much about the merge, I think we should do a little quick story time. Let's do it. Cool. Story time with Cash Hunter. Okay. Let's go. Our story begins here back in 2009, which is the year that Bitcoin was born. Imagine Bitcoin like a person, right? It is born and it now needs a car to get around. As it's going car shopping, it decides that the engine is really the most important part of the car, and so it has three main criteria. Number one, it needs something that is reliable, something that's proven to work. Number two, it's got to be safe. Bitcoin not a great driver, you know the engine might explode something like that. So it's got to be like a safe, reliable kind of engine. Uh, and number three, it wants it to be strong, right? A lot of horsepower. So it decides ultimately to go for a muscle car, something like this, right? If we then fast forward a few years, Bitcoin has a younger brother. We'll call it Ethereum, right? And ETH also needs a car to get around. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, this image was actually generated by Dolly when I looked mm-hmm. for like teenage Ethereum. So I thought that was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. But because it's a newer generation, whatever else, it's got some new criteria. And the big new criteria is that it wants to be efficient, right? Mm. Like a lot of young people these days, they understand that the climate matters and so on. It wants something more efficient. But very sadly, uh, the electric engine that it actually would want to get instead of the gas engine, it cannot afford. And so we can see Vitalik here is crying. It's very sad. <laughs> right? Since day one, they, it grew up saying, "I need the electric engine." Just couldn't couldn't get there, couldn't get it. So it went and got the same engine as Bitcoin. Fast forward again another seven years, and some good news. Vitalik and Ethereum are rich. It can finally start to afford the upgrade and change out the engine. But here is the crazy part, and this is what makes the story so fun and interesting. The engine upgrade can only happen if ETH does not stop driving. Right? It wants the new engine, but it needs the car to continue going. How the fuck do you swap engines in a moving car? Right? Pretty complicated thing to do. So it takes years to figure out the plan, and ultimately, this is what it comes up with. Right? Step number one in the plan: build a replica car with an electric engine. On the side. Step number two: get that replica car to drive at the same speed as ETH, like down the highway. Like imagine two Lambos going down perfectly in parallel, and then at the critical moment, as they're going, swap the engine out of the replica car into the proper ETH car. That is the plan. It sounds crazy because it is a crazy plan, but it's the only kind of option that ETH has here, right? They practice three times to make sure that it kind of works, and then they scheduled the final live attempt when the engines are going to get swapped. And they call that the merge. Merge, wow! wow. First yeah. of all, I am amazed at this analogy. Cash, well fucking done. Probably the best presentation <laughs> you, we've had so far. I'm just waiting for this, like a Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> yeah, right? too fast, too butyrin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, the, like, what does this story actually mean? We'll go through each one of these, and now we'll go a little bit slower. But if you only understand that like 90 second story, you've got like most of it in your head. Uh, so it's going to get a bit more technical. Here we go. The engine in that previous story is what's called a consensus mechanism, right? It's a technical term. A consensus mechanism. All you need to know is it's a way that a blockchain gets to decide what is true and what is not. It's a really important part, right? Like as important as the engine is to the car, the consensus mechanism is that important to any blockchain. So the consensus mechanism is of two types. There is proof of work and proof of stake. 
proof of work That's is what Bitcoin uses. Exactly right, though. Bitcoin uses proof of work, which is like a gas engine, right? And the way proof of work works, you can, there's a ton of YouTube videos about this. You can find it elsewhere. But in short, you have these guys called miners who use all these like heavy duty graphics cards, like basically computer chips to guess at random numbers. And whoever guesses the random number of the first gets the opportunity to validate the transactions and they get a little reward from it. Like a gas engine though, this is very kind of wasteful. But Bitcoin, not so worried about that at the time. Proof of work was actually invented back in 1993. So it was already like 20 plus years old by the time Bitcoin came on the scene. Mm. The second criteria it had, had to be safe, right? When we talk about blockchains, we're oftentimes worried about these things called civil attacks. The idea behind civil, uh, civil attack is where a system needs to prove that the players involved within the system are in the individuals and there are no replicas of those individuals. So yeah, so one example would be where your government IDs are issued to you and you can't replicate or duplicate your uh, ID card, right? So that's a civil resistance system. When you have a, a, a network, a cryptographic network like this, where anybody can join in and it's permissionless, you want to make sure that no one person is pretending to be a lot of people and then is able to kind of take over the entire network as a result. Proof of work is very good at this, right? It, can, it is susceptible to some attacks, what's called a 51% attack. But for that to happen, 51% of all the miners in the world have to agree to go together and then do some bad stuff. So it's hard to attack. Proof of work is very strong. It's very easy to decentralize, particularly when Bitcoin started. When Bitcoin first started, uh, like you could do Bitcoin mining on just like your normal everyday laptop, right? Because there was very little hash power in the network. Um, and that was really good because the more decentralized a network is, the stronger it is, right? Remember though, when ETH came on the scene, it had a new criteria. It wanted to be efficient. And actually this one works pretty one-to-one -one with the story because it wants to be energy efficient in particular. Proof of work is very wasteful because all around the world, you have all of these miners dumping all this electrical costs into these graphic cards so they, they can guess these random numbers, right? That requires a lot of electricity as many people would have heard right now. Ethereum wanted to overcome this. But as I said, it couldn't really do that in the very beginning, but it had this idea that it wanted to go to this other consensus mechanism, as you say, proof of stake. At a very high level, the simple way to think about it is instead of miners, we have validators. And miners use electricity to show their commitment. They use the electricity as collateral for the network, basically. Validators just use ETH. They just use actual money as the collateral for the network. Critically though, in order to make sure that it remains safe, if you get caught cheating in a proof of stake system, you get slashed, you lose your tickets to the lottery. And so with this kind of system, uh, it's much, much more efficient, right? You don't have all this electricity being burned all over the world just to guess random math numbers. So Cash is proof of stake as a concept. So this was thought out by whom? This was thought out by Vitalik or Ethereum. It's something that is thought, thought out right now, or it was a concept that existed, which is being ado uh, you know, adopted into this uh, particular problem. Yeah, I, so I don't know exactly who the people responsible for inventing it are. I don't believe it's Vitalik, though he might've been a part of that as well. Proof of stake as an idea was kind of put forward in I, I think around like 2012-ish, uh, right? So it's certainly much, much younger. It was invented by Satoshi Stekamoto. Are you happy now? <laughs> <laughs> the next part of the story, right? The crazy part, the too fast, too buterin part is to do this engine swap without even stopping. Hmm. This is where things get crazy. That is just reality, right? In truth, you cannot just turn off Ethereum. There's not like a little light switch that you can just kick Great. in a back room. That's kind of the whole point. The replica car that I mentioned before, that is something called the beacon chain. The beacon chain is a term you might've heard already. This is a version of Ethereum that uses proof of stake. And it has been running for the last almost two years in parallel to the real chain. The basic idea was, hey, Ethereum will continue to be proof of work for a long time. Let's have proof of stake start. And then we can just kind of test and make sure that it works out. Okay, so it copied all the transaction history up until 2020, uh, December, 2020. And then going forward, it was just proof of stake to validate it. No actual transactions. Like if you've used Ethereum in the last two years, you were still using the proof of work. Chain, but all of those transactions were just copied onto the beacon chain, onto the replica card. The next part of the plan, driving at the same speed, uh, that is the beacon chain running right now. So as I say, in the last two years, it has just been running at the same exact speed as Ethereum proof of work. Already now, it has more than 14 million Ethereum staked to it, and it's paying out interest. And then as we talked about, that switch without stopping, that actual engine translation, that is going to be the merge, right? You're merging the new engine into the old car, basically. That's why it's called the merge instead of something else. The practice drives that I mentioned before, right? Those three practice runs, that happened in real life. So Ethereum has these things called test nets, right? Mm -hmm. These test nets are places for developers to play around, make sure that their shit works and do all sorts of things. There's three of them, Robston, Sepolia, and Gorley. 
Um, and each of those has already gone through a merge successfully over the last few months, which is really exciting. Just a fun fact to add here, uh, before these test nets came into the picture for testing out the merge, there was another test net that was created for temporary reasons that was called Kintsugi testnet, right? And that was actually the start of testing out the merge. But the big question is like, why the fuck does anybody care about this at all? Like, why are we even talking about this? Turns out there are some very good things. If you like Ethereum, the merge is a very good thing for you. Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. First, and this is actually good if you just are a person, if you're a human being, carbon emissions are going to go down. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but the world is getting hotter. Have you guys noticed oh, this uh, yeah, lately? A little bit, little bit I've been feeling. I don't know, I'm in Bangalore, yeah. so uh, I really can't feel a lot of heat. <laughs> proof of work does have carbon emissions because you need that electricity and proof of stake you need 99.9% .9 less electricity it also is good because it takes away one of the critiques that anti-blockchain people have right you might hear some critics be like oh it's so wasteful every time you mint an nft that goes away yeah. so that's good the eth issuance is going to drop dramatically uh, this is a, a little bit of a complicated subject so I'll, I'll try to make it easy right every day ETH issues new ETH as rewards for the miners in a okay. proof of work system, right? Okay. Right now, that those rewards are worth about $20 million a day. Hmm. That's a lot of money that's going out of the system, right? And that is the price that Ethereum has to pay for security. Those are like the bribes that it gives to people around the world to come and secure the network by giving it electricity. In a proof of stake system, the bribes are much, much smaller because instead of having miners paying for electricity and then need to be rewarded for the cost of electricity plus their effort, now it's just a simple reward on its own. So it's going to go from an emission rate of 4.3% per year, that's basically inflation, down to 0.4%. So it's going down 90%. And that is really good for supply. And the emission rate uh, is high because in proof of work, all the machines have to fight against each other. There's a lot Correct. more work being done, whereas in proof of stake, uh, there's a lot less effort in fighting with each other. So uh, with staking, you have a reduction in circulating supply, right? What this means is that when you stake, you are literally giving your ETH to a validator, right? Or you are running your own validator, which means you are no longer able to sell it as easily as you once were. Right now, there's some degree of lockup. I'll talk about that in a second. But in proof of stake systems like Solana, most of the Solana on the Solana network is staked and is earning those interest rewards, right? Mm -hmm. Right now for Ethereum, only about 10% of ETH is staked because it's only the beacon chain. But once the merge happens, we expect a lot more ETH to get staked and more ETH that's staked means less supply that can be sold. So again, it's that same dynamic. It's good for supply. Right. It ought to be good for price. The merge also has a few other benefits. It's just kind of good in general, right? Some other fun stuff is going to happen. ETH is going to start to get faster, not right now, but a little bit into the future. Proof of uh, the merge and kind of moving to proof of stake is an important milestone on the road to getting faster. From a general like kind of crypto morale standpoint, this is basically the only positive narrative we have right now in the bear market where everyone's shitting on crypto. It's nice to see like big technological upgrades can happen in a decentralized way. That's a big deal. Um, and if you're a gamer, as I know some people watching this will be, your gaming computers are probably going to get cheaper <laughs> because now demand for these compute these graphics cards is going to go down. So that's good. It'll be cheaper to play Fortnite or whatever the fuck people are playing these days. That's all the good stuff that's going to happen. Let me tell you about some stuff that's not going to happen. Uh, the first thing that's not going to happen is that ETH is not going to get noticeably faster. ETH is going to remain fairly slow because this change is happening just on the consensus layer, right? It's just the consensus mechanism that's changing, not what's called the execution layer. You know, to have another metaphor into the mix, imagine ETH like a sandwich, right? You have like your bread, you have your meat, you have your lettuce, you have whatever else. We're just swapping out the meat. But all of the, this is already going to sound bad. I can tell that there's like a roast coming <laughs> as I'm saying this. Please continue. I want to know about the sandwich. This is like swapping out like ham for, I don't know, like prosciutto or something like that, right? Uh, but all the other stuff is staying the same for right now. And it turns out that it's actually like the lettuce and the onion that make the network faster, right? So we're just changing out one what about, layer. What about, the, the, what about the ketchup? Is that still going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> the ketchup will remain the same, uh, nice and uh, sweet as always. <laughs> all of that stuff, the ketchup, et cetera, will change though. That, that change is going to come up and it has the best name in the history of crypto. They call it Proto Dank Sharding. Nice. That's the actual official name for it. Isn't that cool? Dank yeah. Sharding. Yeah. Because it was proposed by the guy who was, who was named uh, Dankert Fried, right? Uh, oh, so that's yes, how the dank sharding kind of came. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, second common misconception. 
ETH is not going to get cheaper like to use. The fees are going to stay basically the actual same. And it's for that same reason as before, right? That sandwich metaphor, we're just changing out the, the meat layer. Everything else is actually what impacts the fees. Um, this has no change on kind of block space, right? And the final misconception to know is that if you have already staked to the beacon chain, you are not going to be able to unstake right away. If you go ahead and stake right now, your stuff is just locked probably for at least another six to nine months. And then even at that time, there's going to be a queue to unstake. So you can't just like do it on an instant notice. You'll say, oh, I want to unstake. And then it still might take a little bit more time after that. When do people actually get to unstake, right? So uh, that is going to be included in an update called Shanghai update, which is probably the next upgrade that is going to come after the merge, right? And that's where this unstaking uh, a part will be activated. Now, one thing to know here as well is that when ETH can get unstaked, that should have an impact on the market, or I would speculate that it does. Again, this is not financial advice. For the next six to nine months, all this ETH is getting staked and it's getting locked and you can't take it away. That means supply is less. Mm -hmm. In six to nine months, when you can unlock, all of that supply is going to come back onto the market. All of the staking rewards, all that interest that people have been earning on stake ETH is going to be available for them to sell. So it'll be interesting to see once this happens, what happens to the price when there's all this new selling pressure that doesn't exist today uh, that we're merging so from a price six, perspective. Six to nine months in ETH standards means three to four years. <laughs> that is very possible. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's all the stuff that's not going to happen. Last thing to know, probably the most important thing to know, what do you need to do about it? If you are sitting at home, you know, you're eating dinner or whatever else right now, what do you need to do about the merge? The good news is, pretty much nothing. nothing. Just chill. Do not go crazy. Do not go start buying ETH on leverage. Do not start doing weird yield farming stuff. Just relax. This is a big deal. No one knows exactly what's going to happen next. If you have ETH right now and you don't do anything, you will have ETH the next day as well. This video is not being made so you can make some financial transaction. It's being made so when you're at a party and someone's like, yo, crypto, what's going on? And you can be like, yo, proto dank, dank sharding. And just, <laughs> just feel good that you know this information. And it's just good to know. And it's honestly, I think it is like a, it's a historic event, not just for crypto, but honestly broader, like for, for humans, it's a relatively historic event, right? Never, it, let's imagine that you work at Apple, right? And you want to do a major upgrade on the next iPhone. It's easy enough, right? Tim Cook says, this is what we're going to do. People have to listen to him. There's direct reporting lines and so on. Mm. ETH is decentralized, right? There's no boss. As much as we all love Vitalik, it's not like Vitalik can fire somebody who's working on the ETH network as like a validator or as a core dev or whatever else, right? Mm. This is just a group of people from around the world working asynchronously, remotely, oftentimes anonymously. They don't even know who these people are. And yet they're going to pull off this gigantic change to an ecosystem that's worth $200 billion dollars. Uh, just by coordinating around the importance of this idea. So absolutely massive deal in the history of human coordination. I don't think we've ever had anything as large as this in a decentralized fashion as this. The thing is, if all goes well, we might get Vitalik to rap again, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. E3.0, yo, yo, E3 yo, that'll be fun to watch. <laughs> Last thing to know then, as you go into this, uh, just be aware of scams, right? So don't do anything. Don't, like your mama told you back in the day, don't click on links from strangers. Don't connect your wallet to weird places. And of course, never share your seed phrase. There will be a lot of scams in the next kind of few weeks around the merge with before and after people saying like, oh, you have to do this in order to keep your ETH. You do not. Do not do anything and you will be fine. Just stay safe. Get your popcorn out. Watch. It's a huge deal. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's planned right now for about 6 a.m. East Coast time on the 15th, although that might change slightly. So oh, stay tuned. Be, it's going to be fun. Yeah, crypto is going to be a fun place that day. Uh, and if anyone who's watching, if you have more info uh, about the merge, feel free to drop it in the comment section. You can follow everybody on the panel on Twitter. I'm putting the links in the description. Uh, it's going to be an exciting day. Looking forward to September 15th. Uh, on that note, thank you very much gentlemen for joining us for today's video enjoy